Hello there, I am Connie Ward with Incredible Realty Group here with Sokola Lair with Epic Realty. And we are here today to talk to you about and dispel some myths around the NAR proposed lawsuit settlement and some of the key things to look out for and what it means for you as a buyer and or seller navigating the current market and the environment that we are in. So thank you for joining us today. And we are just going to jump right in. Absolutely. Because we're here to allay some of the fears or myths behind what's happening and what people are talking about all over social media, the news. We mm -hmm. want to give it to you straight from a realtor's perspective. Right. So we're going to give you all of the tea today. <laughs> And Absolutely. so, Sakola, let's maybe start out with from the seller perspective okay. um, and also kind of maybe touch on how things have been um, handled in North Carolina for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and so this transition, depending upon what direction and what the final outcome is, maybe a little bit smoother for states like North Carolina and the other 17 states that have already had agency and compensation transparency in place for many years. As you know, um, I originally got my license in 1997 and we had agency agreements and compensation transparency back then and even prior to that. So I right. think that's important for, you know, um, consumers out there to understand that while this is kind of a blanket lawsuit that's covering every part of the country, all states have not handled agency um, or have had the policies, procedures, and processes in place that some states have. So I think we're special in North Carolina, and we're one of the lucky ones that this transaction is not going to be as you know, maybe scary or frustrating or anxiety filled or ridden as some other states may be experiencing right now. Right. Because I think everybody's just listening to the hoopla in the media mm -hmm. and are because I've seen it in my market. I don't know about you. I'm in the triad market. I kind of border that with Mebane, yeah. North Carolina to Greensboro, North Carolina. And you're in the Charlotte metro and the surrounding areas in North Carolina. What I have seen the rise and increase is for sale by owners, also known as FISBOs in right, my market. Yeah. And what I want to say to that is a lot of the for sale by owners that I have spoken to, even some of my friends who said, you know what, I don't want to pay all those fees. And look, mm -hmm. that's legitimate. First of all, let me just say this. Everything in real estate is pretty much negotiable. Now, your attorney's fees, they're not negotiable. You paying your prorated HOA taxes when it's time to settle and close, those are not negotiable. You're going to have to pay those regardless. Excise tax, if you're a seller, you're going to have to pay for those. There is no wiggle room around that. However, when it comes to your commissions of paying out to brokerages, whether it's the listing agent's firm or the buyer's agent's firm, there is some negotiations on that part. And so we just want to let you know for me personally, I can't speak for every other realtor, but for me, I always tell my clients the three D's. Mm -hmm. I disclose, I discuss, but you decide. The three D's, disclose, discuss, decide. That's for right. sellers and buyers. Mm -hmm. One thing I will say about working with a realtor is too, if you're putting your home on the market yourself, you may not be aware of all the disclosures that you need to fill out and complete with accuracy to the best of your knowledge. If your home is a certain age, there's another disclosure for that. Another thing is that when you are putting your home out there on the market and you start receiving offers, you may not already have, and because it, it's not open to the public, what an offer looks like because our forms change every single year. I know since I've been in real estate every single year, Disclosures, we have a new disclosure coming out in July 1 that has changed and updated and it has been revised. So if you're putting your home out there on the market, you're going to have to go back and do some more work or the buyer's agent is going to say, do you have the updated disclosures? Um, we're missing this disclosure. Or you're looking at an offer and you may not know what those terms mean. So working with a realtor who is going to be standing in your corner to help you negotiate, to help you go through and disclose the types of offers that you are receiving on the table and presenting 
what could possibly be the best fit for you. Ultimately, again, you decide, you make those decisions. But again, I've had a friend, I told him up front what disclosures he needed to have. Even after he was done with the process, I asked him, I said, are you ready to be a realtor now? And he said, oh God, no. <laughs> I don't want to right. do what you yeah. do. Mm -hmm. And so they have no idea. And I, know, and I know reality shows make it seem so glossy, easy, breezy, but we got the boots on the ground. We're here to work and represent you. And another thing, Connie, I want to say is if you are not selling your home for yourself and you are working with a listing agent, particularly in North Carolina. This is something I do, and Connie, I'm pretty sure you do this as well, is provide in the listing conversation that I have with sellers is to show them and disclose to them what they could potentially net in the transaction. So this is just a sample of what we call the seller estimated net sheet. A realtor has gone through, done some research, you provide what the mortgage payoff is. If you have a first mortgage, second mortgage, home equity line of credit, HOA fees, all of that, what potential attorney's fees you will have to pay from the seller's point of view, your prorated HOAs, your taxes, recording the deed or transferring the deed, you have to pay a fee for that, your excise tax. You're going to have to pay for those things as a seller. Then as you scroll down, if you decide if your home hasn't been in great condition or there's been some deferred maintenance, maybe potentially doing a pest inspection or home inspection. So you already know the condition of your home when you're selling it. But in this estimate here at the bottom, this is just an estimate. This is a possibility of what you could walk away with. In this estimate sheet, Connie, can you scroll up for me just a little bit? It will show you the commission that a realtor could receive. And I always tell my clients this, guys, I don't get all that money. It's split 50-50, typically, in most cases, 50-50 in half. One is going to go to the listing brokerage and the other one is going to go to the buyer's brokerage for the buyer bringing a willing, ready, and able buyer, okay? Then if you really want to break that down, and which I normally do, and guys, even half of that, I may not get. Now, Connie, you're different because you have your own firm. So you, you know, facilitate how that money is divvied out, whether you're paying someone to help you on the back end, but say someone like me who's working with a brokerage, guess what? Even 50% of that, a fee or percentage of that is going to, the brokerage first, then I get the rest of that. So, and that is one, that is to protect you because you have a firm who's knowledgeable. You have an agent who's knowledgeable, a realtor who's knowledgeable to represent you, to negotiate for you, to be accountable for funds, making sure that funds, monies are getting where they need to be making sure that we're reaching the deadline in a timely manner to negotiate on your behalf in a legal and ethical manner. So always when you're having a listing discussion, if you're thinking about putting your home on the market, if you don't see some seller estimate sheet, ask for one. You have the right. Ask for one. Transparency, honesty, that's what I go by. That's how I work. That's where I thrive. And that's how I get a lot of my seller clients because if they ask me a question, I'm going to be honest with them. And I'll tell them, I don't know everything in this business. Every transaction, every situation is different. But if I don't know, I know how to ask. People like Connie, I'll ask her. Right. She's been in real estate <laughs> since the 90s, since the late 90s. I will ask. I will call the commission. I will ask. So don't always go by the shiny object syndrome when it comes to a realtor who's going to do that. Look for the boots on the ground. What are you bringing to the table? What can I possibly walk away with? Okay. Because they've already done their research and saying, okay, based on comps, this is what three scenarios, possible scenarios of what you could list your home for. And this is what you could potentially walk away with. So we're not your enemy. 
Okay. <laughs> Not all realtors are your enemy, but I will say, please just be open enough to still have those conversations and find out which realtor will be the best fit for you. And if at the end of the day, you're still not satisfied and you still want to try this and go out on your own, then go ahead, but make sure you have all the disclosures. And I know for the sample offer to purchase, you can't get that on the web. You have to get that from a realtor. So make sure you're doing everything above board either way. And if you have someone like me, I'm going to already tell you what your essential documentation needs to be. This is what, Connie, you've seen this before. This is my magazine. This is what I give to sellers. I always tell them what they need to have before they even put their home on the market. And so those are some things that sellers don't think about as well. But then again, that's why you need to have a trusted advisor by your side representing you all the way to the finish line and beyond that. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I echo all of those sentiments, facts, um, and relevant pertinent information. Um, and I just would want to add to this. I think that um, the internet obviously has changed our lives, right? Mm -hmm. So consumers have access to so much information now and almost too much information um, because everyone feels like they're a guru or they can attend YouTube University and become a guru. Um, and I've done many things. I've learned many skills mm -hmm. um, via YouTube, right? Um, right? Especially when I'm looking to save money because I'm a frugal person. I understand that. But there are certain things that I do not touch. I do not touch electricity and I do not touch water. But I may do a DIY. I may install some flooring or paint a wall. But there are certain things where the skill set required, the licensing, um, and also the person that is practicing a particular thing on a daily basis is always going to have wisdom, knowledge, insight, and discernment that you will never have. Mm -hmm. So th that is something you cannot get from the internet. And I, and I feel like there's so much coming at us, right? From a media perspective, like you talked about, um, there's things in the news and we've seen a lot of things that are actually being reported incorrectly. Um, and we are not, you know, out here um, saying that none of this is true. We didn't do any of that because there were some bad apples, right? Just like every other industry. Um, but I personally don't believe that this is just this blanket thing that every single real estate professional has done. I think we've seen this in other industries um, and there's other factors that have influenced just the mindset of people with reality TV and shows and the internet that makes it appear that our jobs are really easy and simple and we only post pictures of houses online and we unlock doors and we fill out a couple of forms. And I'm here to tell you, even though I practice real estate and I had a gap in between um, and have done other things and back to real estate, the totality of it is about 25-ish years that I've been in this space in some capacity, um, is that I've sold or participated in the sale of hundreds of transactions, right? Um, and all of them have some nuance, something that's unique about it because it involves humans. Mm -hmm. And anything that has the human element, the factor, you're going to have, whether it's personalities, whether it's circumstances, whether it's something with the property or the people, there's going to be something that's unique about that situation. And because we do this on a daily basis, because we practice real estate, just like by no means am I comparing us to doctors, but doctors practice medicine, attorneys practice law, right? We are practicing and we are using case studies. We're using, you know, our experience that we've had in other transactions. And this is just something that the average person is not going to have. And when something arises that is out of the norm that you didn't see on TikTok, then you're going to potentially be in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, we have to keep these things in mind because I firmly believe that the actual crux, the meat of the transaction begins after going under contract, right? I think most of us would agree that many um, real estate agents, we can market homes, we can post pictures, we can do all the things to get a home market ready, right? To make it as marketable and appealing to the most people that are 
fit that criteria for that home as possible, but it takes a certain level of skill to get that property from contract to the closing table. All the things that happen in between that space can be very complex. They can be um, stressful. Um, there can be a lot of unknowns, things that pop up. Just one simple random example. A last transaction I had had a unrecorded shared driveway situation that could have completely derailed the entire transaction. Mm -hmm. Literally hours upon hours, days upon days of calling, studying, trying to find the owner of the property next door um, because there could have been a potential um, easement situation or it could have been an encroachment situation. So these are the type of things that come up that the average person is not going to be able to handle. And attorneys are involved in real estate transactions, but there are certain things that they don't do so i've seen on the internet where people say oh all we need to do is get an attorney the attorney yeah for sure can help you with the actual contract the legalities of that maybe keeping you out of hot water but an attorney is not going to do all of the things that a real estate agent does for a flat low minimum fee that people might think that they can get an attorney to do it's going to be they don't have enough manpower or hours to even facilitate a whole entire real estate transaction. So I feel like people are disillusioned if they think, oh, an attorney is going to do all of these things because there, it's just not possible. Um, and I don't think that they would get it at the price that they think that they will get it. So that's one thing. And the other thing is, you know, we're helping you navigate and facilitate this process, right? We're kind of like the conductors, the orchestrators, and we're helping you navigate all the ebbs and flow and the twists and turns that happen throughout this transaction. Mm -hmm. And we do have that duty to discover and disclose material facts. And what are material facts? How are you supposed to know what a material fact is? Because you want to protect yourself, right? You want to be protected. And the only way to do that is, in my opinion, is to partner with a professional that has had enough experience and that insight to help you navigate the unknown. And then when things do pop up, guess what we have? We have the Real Estate Commission. We have our governing bodies. We have other industry professionals. We have other brokers, other real estate agents that we can tap into and we have on speed dial that the average consumer is not going to have. So commissions have always been negotiable. They are negotiable. Every single listing I've ever had, we negotiate that commission. There is no flat fee. So I think for us, that's not something that's going to change. Um, but I think it's very important that now the things that we try to shield the general public from, because that's what our job was, we took on all the stress and the burden of smoothing out all the kinks and we keep you in the loop. And obviously we're going to be transparent and provide the critical information, but there are so many things that are resolved within, you know, a day or a couple of hours or a few minutes because we've made five phone calls. We're not showing you all of these things or even telling you all these things because we fixed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those things that could have been a problem have been resolved, but all you see is the beginning and the end. Oh, hey, here's this pretty house. Oh, hey, it's under contract. Oh, close, cha-ching, now I got all this money, right? We don't show you all of the things that happen within that window, right? We didn't talk about the uh, repair negotiation process. What happens? What happens if the house does not appraise? Um, protecting our clients from losing money, such as buyers losing their due diligence money and all the things that we proactively do to help protect you. There's countless, numerous things that happen in a transaction that I think people are don't have an awareness of because we're good at what we do. And when you're working with a experienced good agent, then it might seem like it was easy. But trust me, they lost sleep. They might have shed a few tears during that process that you never knew about. Mm -hmm. um, and I could go on and on and on to the break of dawn <laughs> on this particular topic. But um, I think there's just so much that has been unknown and there just hasn't been any visibility into it. And now it's like, we're going to be telling them all the things. And I think in a couple of months, actually, I think the general public is going to be telling us, okay, enough. 
We tired mm-hmm. of hearing about all the right. 10,000 things that you do mm-hmm. um, in a transaction because we haven't really been talking about that. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it on social media about all the list of things that realtors do and bring mm-hmm. to the table. But ultimately, it's what we do to protect you as a seller. And now we're going to shift over and talk about the things that realtors do to protect buyers. Mm-hmm. And you know, this is my jam. <laughs> I just love, I have, I just I have love my buyers. I you know. love my Ooh. buyers. I just love them, especially first time home buyers. And even those who have been the in a home buyers. for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Because you sell a home, that side of the transaction looks totally different when mm-hmm. it's time to buy. Yep. So, Connie, what is the best way that as a realtor you have found to represent buyers is, I don't know about you, but is to make sure that they are prepared. I firmly believe on both sides that it's important to have a stress less transaction. I can't guarantee as you that all the yeah. stress is going to be taken off your shoulders. Mm-hmm. And I usually tell buyers when they're anxious, I'm like, wait, wait, just take all of that, put it on me. Mm-hmm. I'll take care of it. <laughs> I'll handle it. And if there's something that I've hit a bump in the road, usually I tell my clients, I'm going to keep you in the loop, but I'm going to tell you what, here was the situation, but I'm going to tell you what I did to kind of help allay that and remedy that. And here are our next steps. And again, this is that part, disclose, discuss, and then they decide how the buyer wants to proceed and move. And sometimes I, I love the three D's, right? Mm-hmm. The, the disclose, discuss, and decide. Mm-hmm. And when I'm having my consultations, especially, um, well, buyers and sellers, I say this a lot. I have a lot of catchphrases that, you know, I make up, but I tell them you're the boss, right? Mm-hmm. You make all of the decisions. It is not up to me to force you, to convince you, or to tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. My role is to provide you with the information that you need educate and empower you to make the most informed decisions possible pertaining to your role in this transaction as a buyer or a seller. That's my role. And you're the principal in those agreements. They're the principal. So who is the principal? The principal is the person that's in charge. The principal is the one that's calling the shots and making all of the decisions and also negotiating our fees with us. You have pretty much all of the power because we have a fiduciary responsibility and duty to you. And you are, again, the principal, the boss, the chief, the head person in charge. As long as you don't ask me to do anything illegal, immoral, or unethical, Mm -hmm. I will follow your direction and your decisions or your decisions. My job is to give you all of the information that you need to help you help you make those decisions. So I think that's really key um, in all of this is that we are not calling the shots and making the decisions. Mm-mm. On either side. You're deciding. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You, always. Um, always. Always. You ha- make the final decision. Even if I may think something is great and that may be the best option, I will mm-hmm. say, what do you think? What are your thoughts what are your on thoughts? this? And then we're like, and then sometimes I come back, well, what do you think? Well, based on the research, based on this, I think based you have some the good data, options here. Right? right? Yeah. You, mm-hmm. I present data on both sides, but you mentioned something very key. I do buyer consultations as well. And mm-hmm. a lot of times, and this is not a knock against other people, how they run their business, but that's how I like to run my business because one, I want to make sure that we are a good fit. I am running a business. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that we are a good fit. Right. Am I yep. a good fit to be your trusted advisor? Mm-hmm. Are you a good fit to be my client? Because one thing, like you said, we are the expertise in our area. And if I have a client who was like, well, no, I want to do this. I want to do that. Well, then, okay, that's great. But right. then I may pick that up in a consultation. As a buyer, you may pick up, this is, may not be the right realtor for me. So a lot of times when you're searching online and you come across a realtor, And you say, hey, I want to see this home. First and foremost, what I would advise anyone to do when you are thinking about buying a home from the moment you're thinking, dreaming, planning about buying a home (laughs) is one, get your finances straight. Start saving some money. That's a whole other 
This whole another conversation. Video. We've done a video <laughs> on that already. I think we talked about the th- 10 things uh-huh. you should not do right. when you're yeah. applying for a mortgage loan, mm-hmm. but plan and prepare. And during those times, whether you're hopping in your car to meet up with a realtor to see a home for the very first time too, I want to make sure that please be pre-approved. Can I just pause you for just a moment? Because you touched on a lot of things. And you know, <laughs> when we're talking about buyers, Nicole and I have been accountability partners for what, three years now? We meet every single going week. On four. We've had it's a going lot on of four. conversations. Yes. And, um, you know, some of these things are hot buttons and not hot in the sense of like being upset, but right. because I'm very passionate about these things. And we do not hop into cars <laughs> to show homes. Um, I think as real estate professionals, there's several things that should be happening before we ever get to that point. But I do want to point out that I think with the internet and with Mm -hmm. some of the misconceptions and lack of understanding about our roles and also on our part, us trying not to be pushy, overwhelming salespeople, Mm -hmm. that there were maybe some of us that did things out of order because we didn't want to turn you off. We didn't want to scare you. We didn't want to start talking about documents and making it seem like you have are committed to us, you know, upon first sight, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we kind of, in some ways, the collective um, allowed you to be in the driver's seat when you technically should be a passenger. Um, and I think that has caused some of the, the issues that we have. And so... I want to point out the fact that, like you said, I know I'm not everybody's jam and that's right. totally fine. It does not hurt my feelings, mm-hmm. right? I'm not everybody's jam and that's right. cool. And that's why it's so important to have that initial conversation that mm-hmm. may or may not lead to a consultation, which may lead to then you becoming a client in not a customer. Because mm-hmm. until we actually are in a relationship and we go together, you are a customer. You are not my client. And there are certain right. things that I do not owe you as a mm-hmm. consumer, right? I'm um, to be honest and to treat you fairly, um, but I don't owe you that fiduciary responsibility or even privacy, right? Um, right? In certain aspects, if we are not partnered up in that agency relationship. And I think that's one of the ways where in North Carolina, we're special and unique because we have always had, as far as back as I can remember, agency and agency agreements and also Mm -hmm. the compensation and how we get paid, how much our fee is and who we're expecting to pay us is all written out in that document. Um, And so we go from the initial conversation Mm -hmm. to a consultation. And ideally, we're going to meet face-to-face like this on Zoom or in person so that we can get a sense for each other and we could get to know one another before we start asking you your deep, dark secrets, right? Right. So that's the purpose of that consultation. And then we want to talk to you about some of the legalities of engaging a real estate agent versus you calling us or from some of the well-known websites and expecting Expecting us to jump in the car and meet one, a stranger um, that we don't know that is ready, willing, and able, qualified, um, that you have the resources, um, the cash or otherwise to purchase a property, right? And for a safety perspective, it's not safe to jump in your vehicle and meet complete strangers at a home that may be in an area that's not populated. Um, and I think for people to expect us to essentially risk our lives because we don't want to have this conversation that can be awkward early in the process. So I've always conducted myself that way as you have, having those initial consultations and conversations and deciding, are we a good fit? Do we actually want to form a partnership before I jump in my vehicle and use my time, talent, resources and risk my life? Mm -hmm. Um, Because that is a fact that it is, this is a dangerous space yes. um, for us to operate in. And we should not be expected to risk our lives to show a home to a stranger, to a person we do not know, right? Uh, and we want to be bringing buyers into homes who are potential candidates to purchase, not just looking for the sake of looking. These right. are people's private, personal homes that they may even still live in. So all of those things are things that I think the general public does not think about into taking consideration that, oh, I just feel like going to look at houses that may or may not be in my price point, and that's okay. So mm-hmm. it's not okay in a lot of 
categories and for a lot of reasons. And in North Carolina, we have what's called working with real estate agents disclosure. This is something that's supposed to happen and is required, right? Upon mm -hmm. substantial contact. What does and that mean? Let's we talk get to about substantial that. contact really quickly. Yes, because really you quickly. start, a lot of buyers will start <laughs> off by saying, well, I'm looking for a three bedroom, two bath home. I'm looking for this amount of square feet. I make this amount of money. First of all, oops, my credit stop. is this and this stop. and, and stop. what? Stop. Time stop. out. Do not. I'm not, look, this is a hot topic. I'm not getting upset, but Listen, I, I want to drive this point I gotta, home. I, myself. I want to drive this point home to you all. The moment you start talking about your financial abilities, what you're looking for in your dream home, that is when a realtor, and I know it may seem awkward, but that's when a realtor will have to go, okay, let me explain to you how agency works in North Carolina. Because when Connie said that we do not have any loyalty to you, she's showing the brochure. I'm probably going to put this as a bonus on my podcast as well, but it's called the Working with Real Estate Agents brochure. That's what we have in North Carolina. We have it for buyers and we have it for sellers because we want to explain to you how agency works in North Carolina. First and foremost, when, when Connie said we don't have a loyalty to you, if you show up again at an open house that I may be showing, okay, for my firm, listen to me now, for my firm, and you've already told me information and you are already working with another realtor and not with me. You did not sign a buyer's agency agreement with me. Don't you know, I could go back and tell the listing agent all of your business because you have put yourself, you have exposed yourself, you have put yourself out there and you have given personal financial information to someone who does not have a legal, ethical fiduciary duty to you as a client. When I say, when we say agreements, buyer's agency agreements, something we've had in North Carolina for a very long time, it protects you as a client. It protects me as your trusted advisor because my firm or Connie's firm is representing you. So please make sure. And you and should be receiving this. this. There's you also be a one page it. document that you is like working it. with real estate agents disclosure that you sign. Yes. If you are not receiving, not necessarily this brochure, because this brochure is something that you okay. could have a link to and download yeah. yourself. We could provide it to you in PDF format, or I like to give people the actual physical that mm -hmm. they can see, touch and feel. And this has so many Q and A questions and answers and um, information in it, but we do give that disclosure up front mm -hmm. that you sign as an acknowledgement of receipt and that we discussed yes. and disclosed this to you. It does not obligate you to work with us. But mm -hmm. before we jump in a car and show you a home, you should have received a working with real estate agents disclosure every single time, every single agent. And mm -hmm. a lot of times that's not something that's happening, um, which is, you know, part of the, the hot water that some of us may have gotten into. But it's very important to know this information and understand and not perceive that as us trying to force ourselves onto you to sell you something. It is for your protection. These are consumer protection mm -hmm. procedures and guidelines to keep you safe and to make sure that your best interests are always at the forefront. And so as we were talking about, once we have that initial conversation and we're moving into a consultation and we're discussing agency with you and then we're deciding and maybe we're not deciding that day and maybe we are potentially going to a agency agreement for that one property. So you don't have to go into an agency agreement with me forever and ever and ever, right? It right. could be for that specific property until we've gotten more comfortable and we've decided mm -hmm. that we want to move forward. Different agents handle it different ways. But uh, after the first or second conversation, I feel like if you cannot decide if I'm your jam, then I'm probably not. And you probably need to move on and find someone else that closely aligns with whatever it is that you're looking for, whether it's from a personality perspective, style, or whatever it may be. And that's totally fine. But just understand that a lot of these things are in place to protect you and to keep you empowered and informed and not to harm you. Um, and I think that's the area that kind of got a little murky because we didn't want to scare you away by doing this upon that first substantial context. Like, can you show me a house? Bam! sign this look at this read this and you're like we just met right but and it comes across overbearing and pushing down yeah. this process because this is a huge 
decision. This is, for most of us, the largest financial decision we're going to make in our entire lifetime. And so it's super important. It's not like play, play, um, just casually. So it's not necessarily even about just the money or um, not necessarily even about our time, but taking this very seriously and handling it the way that it should be handled. And I think that's what we're able to now move forward in because now this whole can of worms has been opened and I think it's a great thing. I think it's a great thing for agents and for consumers because I think it is going to shed a lot of light on the unknowns and dispel a lot of the things that you've seen on reality TV and social media. One other point I just want to add for buyers as well. Do not be surprised if an agent before they even get in their car and show you a home because every agent operates their business, runs Mm -hmm. it differently. Some will hop in a car because you call them up and say, hey, I want to see this house. Okay. Do not be surprised if there are some agents, even me, even after I do a buyer's consultation, I'll tell them straight up, I need a copy of your ID. Mm -hmm. Yep. I need a copy of a valid driver's license or some form of ID for me to know who you are. You you are who you say you are. That is a protection for us, yeah. but it's also a protection for you because there is a lot of fraud going on right now. And some people have even gotten savvy. We're getting a photo ID, but as a realtor, we also have ways to do a little more digging and finding out, okay, is this the person who they say they really truly are? That is a protection. And I tell my clients that all the time, even if you are selling your home, I'm going to ask for your ID. Mm-hmm. Cause it may not be your home. Right. I had a relative reach out to me about a rental property they were interested in. She forwarded me the email. I did some digging. I found out that that is not the owner's name. Mm-hmm. Yep, it and happens that, all that the home, time, mm-hmm. right? And I said, "Well, let me see. Do you have a copy of the lease agreement?" It was something that somebody had downloaded off online, and I typed a response for her. And I said, send this back to them and see what the response is. Mm -hmm. It was complete fraud. They were trying to rent out someone's home. So that part where you are seeing that on national deposit and collect the deposit. You'll never hear from them ever again. You'll never hear from them again. Mm -hmm. And you think you're going to get ready to move into this Mm -hmm. place. And people and the owners are looking at you like you're crazy. (laughs) So don't be surprised. We are going to ask for ID. We're going to still do a little bit more digging and make Mm -hmm. sure you are who you Mm -hmm. say you are. That is a protection for us, Mm -hmm. but it's also a protection for you. So, Cola, you know what? I know we probably weren't planning to talk about this um, or even to go into this level of detail, but I think this is just so important. Um, There are a couple of things, um, and I don't want to forget because it just popped into my mind, Mm -hmm. about our compensation, right? That it's negotiable um, on the buyer side and the seller Mm -hmm. side. And also... Real estate agents, especially on the seller side, we are typically the one taking all the risk, right? Because we have upfront expenses, right? Mm -hmm. We may spend, you know, upwards of a few thousand dollars to market a home, right? Mm -hmm. And we are not compensated until we reach the closing table, the very end, and the documents are signed and the deed is transferred. So we're being expected to do all of these things essentially for zero compensation up front, Mm -hmm. right? And then provide all of these services and we potentially in the end are out of some money, out of pocket funds, um, and our time, talent, and resources, right? So we're putting forth a lot of risk to serve the clients that we are trying to help. So I think quite often people look at us like, oh, they make a lot of money, they're money grabbing. We do have a lot of expenses. People don't realize we're full-fledged business owners, right? We are entrepreneurs, we're business owners. There's no check on Friday, right? There's nobody that's it's paying us for our services until we've completely formed, performed a lot of services for our clients. So that's one thing that I think people don't understand or don't know about, or maybe they overlook it. And so we're taking on this risk, right? To help you market your home ultimately with the goal of getting it sold and closed. So we have a vested interest in getting you to the finish line as well. And we can often be the glue that holds a transaction together because guess what's inside of a transaction? Personalities. 
And sometimes they clash. And sometimes buyers and sellers will be literally out in the front yard duking it out if there were not real estate agents in place to help facilitate and help people kind of stay in their respective corners. Corners. (laughs) So that's something that we're also very good at and we're skilled at and that we help with. Because I will tell you, with a buyer and a seller potentially trying to go at this on their own, not to say that you can't, okay, because it happens. Um, but on a large scale, a lot of transactions wouldn't make it to the closing table because of just personality, egos, okay. and things like that will interfere with this process. So we're kind of like the referees, right? right. Um, so that's from the seller perspective. On the buyer side, it's always been a thing, or for as long as I can remember, and I know I've said that many times, but... Um, Real estate agents could have charged retainer fees, right, inside of their agency agreements since the beginning of time. Okay, so let's talk about that because in the North Carolina Buyers Agency Agreement, there is a line on the first page that talks about mm -hmm. a fee. And I do know that there are realtors in other states. There are realtors here in North Carolina, uh, teams that will charge a transaction fee or what they may call an administration fee. And that is legally ethically correct Mm because it's in the documents and a realtor can do that but i want you to think about this from the buyer's perspective we're getting in a car gas mileage time to show you homes then submitting offers on your behalf research researching the properties properties, doing the comps Mm -hmm. then helping you advising you on the type of author offer that may be, or even calling up the listing agent, finding, trying to get some insight on what it is Mm -hmm. that can make your offer stand out. All of that, we're not getting paid for until you decide, okay, this is the house, and then the offer gets accepted. And then a buyer's agent will typically get reimbursed once the closing has taken place and the deed has been recorded. Just know with Mm -hmm. this lawsuit, you may encounter more buyer's agents who may have in their buyer's agency, a transaction fee. And that upfront, upfront, potentially non-refundable retainer fee. Non-refundable And the reason why I wanted to talk about the retainer fee is because one, across the board, this has been something that agents have not wanted to do for years okay guys i've been licensed for over 25 years okay from the day i got my license in 1997 that retainer fee line item has been on the buyer agency agreement and in most instances and i can confidently say this it's zero Mm -hmm. okay that and because that's another area where we were trying to protect you to be friendly and to be nice and to try to not scare you away now this whole can of worms has opened and we're like you know what wait a minute we've been providing you with all of these services and all the things for zero dollars but yet we're spending money to help you get to being under contract to buying the home that fits your family's needs, your needs, your your dreams, whatever it is, your um, generational wealth and all of the things that owning real estate can provide. And we're doing that with no skin in the game from our clients because we're basically putting forth the risk and we're also using our time, talent, resources, right? Our money to help you. And so I think what's going to happen too is real estate agents are going to start charging those returning fee- retainer fees. That's going to become the norm. Um, I personally um, am figuring out the adjustments that I'm going to make from my brokerage. And that returner, retainer fee can be credited to you at closing. If you make it to closing, then it will be credited to you. So it's not right. money that you lose like a sock in the dryer. Um, mm-hmm. But it may be non-refundable if you don't close. And I think that is fair. And I think that it's reasonable. And I think that you should start to prepare yourselves and expect to see this. It's not new. 
It's not mm-hmm. unusual. Some agents have practiced this for many, many years, but most didn't because again, we were trying not to scare you away and we wanted to earn your trust and we want you to like us and all of that. But I think now that this is at the forefront is putting us in the position to where now these are the things that we can openly talk about without fear that now you think that we're scammy and we're just trying to get money from you, right? Um, so I right. think that this this is one of the many reasons why I'm, kind of excited about I don't I'm, of course I don't like the space that we are in in the real estate industry but I think some of these things are going to be good for consumers and for real estate professionals as well and there will be some things that we don't like on both sides but we're going to get through that and we're going to navigate it and we're going to have a new norm that is going to be okay um so that's the retainer fee and then of course talking about the buyer agent compensation how we're compensated who (laughs) compensates us whether it's the buyer the seller or a combination thereof Mm -hmm. so those are some things that you can expect to start seeing now um and to start also um adjusting your mindset about right so i I think this is something that like you said it opened up a lot of worms but it also Mm -hmm. makes realtors reevaluate their business practices right. all around. Exactly. Yep. And it's going to our conversations are going to be different, mm-hmm. are going to sound different when it comes to speaking with sellers and buyers. So to close this out, because we talked about a lot of information today. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. And but it was because we're passionate about helping people. I want to be coming from a place of service. I never operate out of scarcity and lack. I'm not going to hound people down. That's not what I do. Right. I don't like to be hounded. So I'm not going to hound you. But if you are thinking about buying or selling your home and you would like more information, please don't hesitate to email me at info at workitliveitownit.com. And I have two magazines here. One is for the buyers, your home buy guide. And then the other one is sold. All the things that you need to know (laughs) before putting your home on the market. And I know sometimes when relocation, are you trying to run and hide from the federal government? Just Mm -hmm. joking about that. But you got to sell it real quick for whatever reason, personal reasons. There are some things that can help you to get your home ready so it can sell in a timely manner. And Connie, how can they reach out to you? You can find me in all the places at either Cake and Real Estate or mm-hmm. ConnieWardRealtor.com is my website. You can find me on social. My phone number is there. My email address. You can email me. You can hit me up in the DMs. However, you need to get in touch with me, even just to have that initial conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I do have those for, you know, obviously. Mm-hmm. No charge. <laughs> Conversations, right? right. right? Yes. Um, oh, my DMs, my phone, text messages mm-hmm. are always open for consumers um, that have questions, concerns, or just need a little bit of guidance, whether you become my client or not. So that's ConnieWardRealtor.com. And likewise, anytime you guys need to reach out, all my handles are work it, live it, own it. Instagram, Facebook. Mm -hmm. don't hesitate. There's no question too large, too small. If I don't know the answer, I will try and find it out for you, but it would probably be best. Like Connie said, is to have a sit down conversation or consultation to see where you are, to see where you need to go. If you need to plan out a little bit longer for on the buying side, that's okay. And anything to keep it moving for you. If you need to sell your home in a timely manner, whether it's because of estate reasons or relationships change or family situation dynamics change we're here to be a service and to help you in the state of i have north one last and shameless is in plug. South, south carolina now right oh Connie, yeah you're oh, south yes. carolina licensed in both north and south carolina mm-hmm. and i have a shameless plug too that i wanted to mention um all the ways that you can contact me and you can find this on my socials and um on my website but i offer a free virtual home buyer class mm-hmm. every single month on the third thursday at 7 p.m via zoom Sometimes I will have additional classes, but you can rely on that every third Thursday at 7 p.m. class at homebuyerclassnc.com. You do not 
have to be my client to attend this class. I have other real estate agents, clients attend my home buyer classes all the time just for general information um, because it may be the timing may be right um, before they can have that um, consultation or conversation with them. And it just gives you a general overview. So don't feel like you have to be my client to attend. Um, just let me know who your agent is because I have a lot of relationship with agents all over the country and I probably know who they are. Um, but again, that's homebuyerclassnc.com. And actually I have a class tonight um, at 7 p.m. So hopefully I will see some of you guys there. Um, and we just look forward to continuing this conversation. Exactly. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and staying with us all this while. We didn't mean for this conversation to take this long. However, we wanted to share some insightful things with you from the realtor's perspective, realtors that care, realtors that want you to achieve that home ownership dream and to take your home ownership to the next level, whether it's upscaling, downsizing, whatever it may be. All right, this is Sakola Lair and Connie Ward signing off. Everyone, take care. Bye, guys.